Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If we are indeed glad to be in the presence of God this morning, as we are celebrating our Ari, the Lydia and GA, I want you to give God a thunderous hallelujah. hallelujah. We want to bless the name of the Lord who has been our children alive up to this moment. We appreciate him for what he did in our midst during the last year, regardless of Sunday. And we are trusting God for his move in our midst today. And I pray the touch of God will reach out to every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As we are making the effort to serve the Lord, our labor will not be in vain in Jesus' name. Shall we close our eyes as we pray together? Our righteous Father, I want to appreciate you for bringing us to your presence this morning. We thank you for the blessing we have been receiving from time to time. Each time we come before you, we ask Lord Jesus, as we have come once again today, you open the heavens upon us in Jesus' name. I soak the programs into the blood of Jesus. Every soul that is here today, I soak them into the blood of Jesus. Let the power in your blood be available unto us today in the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus saturate this environment in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit divine, have your way in our midst in the name of Jesus. And let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Thank you, our blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' name we are praying. I want to bless the name of the Lord for giving us opportunity to hear from Him. The Bible says that people perish for the lack of knowledge. But where the knowledge of God is available, people are being saved. People are being rescued. Because of the knowledge of the word of God, the heart. And I pray for you today. The knowledge God is going to give to you today will be a solution to your challenges in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will be speaking to us today on the subject in the days of your youth. In the days of your youth. The Lord is putting a question before you in the days of you. What do you understand by the days of your youth? What comes to mind when you hear the word or the statement in the days of your youth? The days of our youth is so crucial to God. It's something that God can never gloss with. God does not joke with the days of our youth. And that is why he has sent me to you this morning. That we need to reflect deeply on the days of our youth. How have you been spending the days of your youth? Several of what have passed this stage of youth. How did you spend that stage? What are the decisions you made in the days of your youth in time past? Even as a youth, what are the decisions you are making at this moment? The days of your youth speak of your, the best part of your life. It's the best part of one's life that God has orchestrated for every human being. Every big human being being created by God. God intentionally deliberately, willingly and even lovingly orchestrated this best part of life for every woman being. And this best, of, this best part of life we are talking about is talking about the days of the youth. What do you know about the days of your youth? What's your understanding about the day of your youth? How have you been fearing as a youth? The Lord is asking me a question this morning. I have given you a day of youth. Do you are you conscious of the reason why I've given you the days of youth? The days of youth is a stage that everybody will experience in life. And it's not going to be a lasting experience. It's just been for a while. But the Lord is expecting us to utilize the days of our youth judiciously. To make use you to make use of the days of our youth very well. So that God will be happy that of it true, my son, my daughter have actually. Uh, make use of the day of you when we are. When we are talking about the days of you, it is time, it is a period of decision making. It is a period of choice making. The choice at this prime time of life are such that make an indelible mark on your life and destiny. Any choice you make at this stage of life, at this prime time of your life, are the, are, the, are the choices that will make an indelible mark, an irreversible mark upon your life. If the decision you make in life are positive or devilly, it is going to have a 
and overbearing effect, positive effect, even on your destiny and life. It is a period that whatever decision you make at this period, we have an irreversible uh, mark upon your life. And that's why you need to think deeply about the days of your youth. There was a day I was opportunity to board a bus with a man. And that man was begging for money. And as I was begging for money, the man said, I, I misused the days of my youth. When God was actually telling me to make a decision, right decision for him, he said, I refuse bluntly to listen to the instruction of God. I review bluntly to hearken to the voice of God. God was actually speaking to this man. God was not hidden from him. But he said, I went to take in time to listen to what the Lord was saying. This man was not ready to listen to what the Lord is saying. He was running away from the law. He was running away from making a right decision. But the wrong decision this man took had an bedroom mark on him. This man eventually became blind. He said he was not blind before. He said because of the wrong choice he made, because he was running away from the law, he became a beggar. What I, I want to bring out from this, the decision you make at this moment will have an deadly mark upon your life. Mark that nobody will be able to erase from you. And I want to illustrate this one this morning that there are forces out there that want to influence your God's giving decision. God has made in such a way that you can make the right decision in life. He said, I've placed before you life and death. Choose this day which you want to serve. Is it life or death? Is it good or bad? I have placed before you. There are forces out there that want to influence your decision. Children, I want to listen to me this morning. The Bible says, evil communication corrupts good manner. When you see a child, when you see somebody who is telling you what is contrary to instruction being given to you by your parent, that person actually wants to frustrate the purpose of God for your life. He wants to expose you to danger. He wants to destroy your life. If somebody is cancelling you that you should not do what is right at this particular stage of life, that person is an agent of darkness. The devil has actually sent the person to destroy your life. I wouldn't know who was the counselor, I mean, the, the, the counselor of this man. Who are his counselor? Those that were in his cancer. I don't know today. But I want to believe that some people cancel this man wrongly. And that was why he could not take the right decision. Because of the wrong decision he made, the man became a blind man. The choices you make at this book, at this prime time of your life, will either make you or marry you. The choices you make at this prime time of life, we do will either make you or marry you or destroy you. If you make that decision, definitely you become a renowned man. You will become a man to be reckoned with you, a man of value. A man that carry what? A man that carry weight a lot. A man that everybody will love to identify the same way. If you make right decision at this moment, at this stage of your youth, but if the decision you are making today is a wrong one, your parents are telling you to take right decision, and instead of you to act into their voices, you are not doing it. You are doing otherwise. You are actually walking towards the verge of destruction. You are actually walking towards the verge of what? Destroying your future. I pray you will not destroy your future in Jesus' name. You will not destroy your future in Jesus' name. Wrong choices have the potential to redefine the purpose of God in your life. God has a purpose for everybody. God has a plan for everybody. And God wants you to take that choice at the day of your youth. He wants you to key in to what the Lord is saying concerning your life. In one of our discipleship programs, experiencing God said, When you know where God is working, what do you do? You don't go there. When you understand the mind of God for your life, the purpose of God for your life, the Lord is expecting you to do what? To be obedient to the instruction of the law. It has the potential to redefine your life. It has the potential to direct your step from the path of righteousness, from the path of godliness, from the path of greatness to the path of destruction. You will not be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I said you will not be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Choices are power to redefine our lives. This man became a beggar. God did not create him as a beggar. God created this man to be one of the one, one of the sacred servants of God. He said, God had been calling him right from his wood. He said he refused to hear the voice of God. But because
because he was not ready to listen to the voice of God, the purpose of God for his life was being redefined. A man who was supposed to be in control, he now become he now be, he now, he now become a beggar. You will not become a beggar in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, my son, if sinners entice you, you should do what? Consent thou not. Hello? How are you listening to me? If sinner is telling you to do otherwise, to take decisions that will destroy your life, the word of God says you should not do what? You should not listen to him. The Lord will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. The choices you made yesterday is your present. The choice you made yesterday is your what? Is your present. Where you are today, what you are doing today, where you find yourself, is a function of the choice you made yesterday. And the one you are making presently is your future. Children, are you listening to me? The decision of yesterday determine our present day. And the decision of present day will actually determine your future. What are your decisions? Briefly, I want to talk on the time of youth. It is the time of strength for foundation laying. It is time of agility. God has given you the strength to do several things. When you are talking about you, what you, you simply means strength. The Bible said the glory of your youth is what? It's your strength. When you are talking about you, invariably what you are saying is that what? Strength. It's a time of strength to lay a formidable foundation for your future. It is time of strength. God, you have, God has given you the agility. He has given you the ability to, work, to run from one place to another. That strength has been given to you. A lot of old men today, they are envying young men because they are passing through stage. Some years back, Baba Bile went to a place to, play, to preach the word of God. Baba said, having preached the word of God, several souls were being touched and a person a professor just walked up to him. He said, where were you in 1943? Where were you about 40, 45 years ago? He said, if I had met you at that time, I would have made a right decision. I would have laid a solid foundation for my home. It was a time of you. This man knew that this time can never be reversed again. You can never be suicided twice. It is once in a lifetime. It is once in a lifetime. You can never do 20 twice in your lifetime. It is not possible. You can never be 15 twice in your lifetime. You can never be 10 years twice in your lifetime. It is not possible. It is once in a lifetime. The man said, if I had met you, probably in 1943, maybe I would have laid a solid foundation for my home. A professor for that matter. Being a professor does not exonerate him from the problem of life because he failed to take the right decision. Another woman walked up to him. He said, It's already late for me. What has been done has been done. I cannot reverse it. I only buy this thing for my daughter so that she will not make me say that I made you. What are you using the time of your use for? It is this time of strength. God has given the strength and power to build a formidable foundation for your future. You to age is a privilege. And it's once in a lifetime. Once you pass this day, you cannot reverse it. In Proverbs chapter 20, verse 20, the Bible says, The glory of the youth is their strength. Great year, the splendor of the road. It's your strength. It's the time of strength. And you need to think very well. Do you think that the Yahoo just went to the Yahoo Look at the category of people that engage themselves in Yahoo of things. They are young ones. They are young ones because the devil has seen their glory. He knows that God is taking them to a higher ground. They are the future leader of our nation. And that is why the devil will corner them. In the book of Psalm 11, verse 30, the Bible says, If the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? The devil knows that this is a crucial time for them to lay a formidable foundation for their future. To lay a strong foundation for their future. To stand at the gates of the enemy. And that was why, I mean that is why they devil not stand at this crucial point. At this crucial stage of their life. At their youthful stage. To make sure that what? 
this one will not be able to lay a formidable foundation for their future. You know that once their foundation is destroyed, there is no way they can reverse it. Hello? The devil knows that once the foundation is destroyed, there is no way they can reverse their foundation. A guy beat Yahoo Yahoo some years back. I think he has a house, yes, he has an agility. A boy between 17 and 20 years. He was the only child of this woman. Maybe it was time for, for the sacrifice to be made, and there was no sacrifice. Sacrifice was not available. And the guy was running home. At the end of the day, this guy died, and the mother ran mad. The devil cornered him because he knew that this is the crucial time for him to lay the very solid foundation for the future. But instead of this man to realize that he was consenting to the ideas of the devil, he could not lay a formidable foundation for his life. And that was why he died prematurely. May you not die prematurely in the name of Jesus. May you not die prematurely in the name of Jesus. Parental role and so fighter in laying formidable foundation for our children. The Bible said, train up your child in the way he should go. When he grow up, he will not, he will not depart from it. We have fighter role in laying a formidable foundation for our children. Give them good legacy. When you give them a good foundation, they will actually build that foundation. Some people they prefer to use their money to buy the clothes of fifty thousand, hundred thousand, while their children are suffering. They prefer to use their, their money for Baba Jebu, and the children are being sent away from school. You have a role to play as parents. God has given them to you. You must take good care of this children. The Lord instructed the nation of Israel. He said, make sure you instruct my children. Teach your children the way of the Lord. Teach them my law. Write them on, the top, on your, on your lintel. Write them on your doorpost. Write them when you, when you are sitting down. Write them when they are standing up. As they are going on the road, make sure that what you write it on their front edge. To make sure that what the word of God does not depart from them. We have responsibility. Don't neglect your children because of God. A woman left his children in the care of Jehovah. All in the name of Job. At the end of the day, this Jehovah impregnated the two third daughters of this woman. Because of shame, she has to leave her job. And took the two children to, to her two daughters to abroad. Give them qualitative time. You have vital role. In building a formidable foundation for your children. I cannot leave my job. I cannot leave my job. At the end of the day, she was forced to leave her job. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. We must lay foundation of hard work. Youth in the air. You must be hard work. If you are not hard working, devil will definitely tell you your present life. And it will translate to your future life. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29 says, See a man who is diligent in his business. What is the business in your hand? What is the business being entrusted to you? What is your vision? Your vision is your business. Your job is your vision. Your vocation is your business. Whatever God has entrusted to you, you have been called to be a teacher, it's your business. You have been called to be a nurse, it's your business. You have been called to be a legal practitioner, it's your business. What is the business that God has given to you? Children, what's the business in your hand? Your studies are your business. Say, there you see a man who is diligent in his business. Who is diligent in his job. Say, he will stand before king and not be a man. You must let the, 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 the foundation of hard work, hard labor, you must burn candle in the night before you can exert the life. Read the book, your book, while others are playing. Studies while others are doing things that will not have value to their lives. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. We have the account of Joseph. Joseph was being diligent in his business. And that was why Abraham Potiphar decided to hand over everything in his house unto Joseph. He was so dutiful as far as his job was concerned. And when Potiphar saw this, he saw a diligent man. He said, even God has blessed me as in the sort of this man. He handed over everything unto him except his wife. Everything into the hand of Joseph. May Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Several foundations we have to be laid. I just have little here. 
we must lay the foundation of integrity. Integrity is talking about a correct lie before God. A correct lie before the law. Uprightness in character, uprightness even in action. A correct lie. Look at Job. When Job was facing persecution, when everything had gone, his wife said, Won't you cause God and die? Job said, I will not. He said, Will you re are you going to remain in your integrity? Will you continue in your integrity? That was his cause value. Job knew that he had a call value to be upright before God. He had call value to be a trustworthy person before God. What are your call value? You must lay this foundation. The people that are cheating on today, sign for their money, is because they are not men of integrity. I pledge to Nigeria, my country, to be faithful and honest. Are they faithful? Are they honest to the resource of this nation? It's a function of foundation. That is the kind of foundation they lay for themselves. And that is why they are not being faithful to their legacy, to the oath they sworn on the day they are being sworn in. See, I pledge to Nigeria, my country, to be faithful and honest. Honesty has become something not to come by again. It has become an essential commodity in the market. Integrity. Integrity. You need to look at your life very well. Are you a man of integrity? Are you a man that had a correct life before the Lord? When pastor is not there, is your life correct? When nobody is there, is your life correct? God is watching you. And I will not blame you. It's a function of the foundation you have laid for yourself at this youthful age. May the Lord deliver us in Jesus' name. May the Lord deliver us in Jesus' name. Children, you must be honest in everything you do. Hello? Uprightness in character and in action. Are you listening to me? That's what they call integrity. If you are not honest, in, you are, if you are not being upright in character and in action, you are not a child of God. You are not to be misbehaved. You are not to misbehave to your parents. Job refused to misbehave to God. He said, "I will." The woman said, "Will you remain in your integrity?" And he said, "I will remain in my integrity." Don't let anybody spoil your destiny. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Foundation of being an impactive leader. You are a leader. Tell yourself, I'm a leader. I am a leader. I will fulfill the purpose of God in my life. You, are, you must be ready to be an impactive leader wherever you go. You must have it at the back of your mind that God has created me to impact my generation positively. Some are influencing their generation today negatively. But as far as you are concerned, the Lord says you must be an impactive leader. Second thing I want to say here this morning, the time of youth, we are talking about the time of strength for foundation lay. If the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? The second thing is it's a time of conflict of interest. As God is so much interested in you, so the devil is also much interested in you. God has a great interest in your life. And that's why the Bible is written to you to this one. Say, remember your God in the world, in the days of your youth. Before the evil days come, where you say, you have no pleasure in them again. When you are weak, when you are old, when you don't have agility again, when you don't have action, when you cannot run and again. People for that time come say, remember your God. It's a time of conflict of interest over your life. As God is contending over your life, devil is also contending over your life. There are two forces. The force of God and the force of devil. And they have different interests over your life. Am I talking to you this morning? Apostle Paul said, what I desire to do is not what I'm doing. Only I do what I hate to be doing. It's a conflict. He wanted to do the will of God. But the devil are jacking from doing what is opposite the will of God for his life. I don't want to misbehave. He found himself being he found himself misbehaving before he got converted. I always want to do right as a man who was created by God, but I find myself doing wrong. Just to show you that what well, there is a conflict of interest. The devil is, is contending with God over our lives. Hallelujah. The devil is what? Continue with God over our lives. 
there is a conflict of interest but God is asking to take the right decision take decision for God take decision for God the devil is making effort every day to make the young person to become his own and God is also making effort to become his own if someone becomes devil's own what do you think will become of that person hallelujah let me wake up what do you think will become of somebody who decides to follow the path of satan somebody who decides to hand over his life to satan to contention god is contending for you and there is also contending for you you need to be on the side of god so that you will not miss it in life what are the reasons why the devil is contending for our souls in Psalm 127 verse 4 Psalm 127 verse 4 let me read one verse 3 behold teach that the heritage from the Lord the fruit of whom is a reward like arrows in the hand of a warrior so are the children of one youth happy is a man who has a quiver full of them they shall not be ashamed but I speak with their enemies in the gate. Youth are being called arrows in the hand of God. And on whose hand you find yourself, you are considered to be effective. You are considered to be mighty. What makes a mighty man mighty is the arrow is handed, which is the youth. He knows that without the youth, he cannot fight any battle in life. Look at the people also conspiracy for us in Nigeria the likes of Boko Haram, the likes of Haram, said, whom are the devil using? The youth because the devil knows that you are a weapon in the hand of God you are a weapon and he's trying to get you at all call so that you will be useful for him you will not be used by the devil in the name of Jesus Christ you will not be used by the devil in the name of Jesus Christ youth are the arrow in the hand of the mighty God they are the weapon of battle, fierce and effective in, in the hand of whose cover is full of them. It's effective in the hand of whose cover is full of them. It's effective in the hand of the one that is holding the youth. You are a weapon if you don't know. And that is why the devil is contending for you. You are not just ordinary weapon. You are a mighty weapon. Are you getting it this morning? What you don't see, devil sees it. What you don't know, devil knows it. About you, about your personality. You are a weapon. And that is why I want to get you at all costs. You will not be gone to my devil in Jesus' name. Number two thing is that he said, Happy is a man whose giver is full of them. Anyone that has them in his cause is happy. Anyone that has youth in his house, that has you that has youth in his environment, that has will always be happy. Go to the uh, organization today, the people that are, that are productive, that are actually making money for the for the company, are the, are the youth. You have sharp brain, very intelligent. They are productive, very happy. God has gifted you with every resource needed to make it alive. Happy is a man whose quiver is full of them. The number two is because the Bible says they cannot be defeated when they contend with the opponents in the courts i don't know where you are getting this this morning they cannot be defeated when they do what when they contend with the enemy at the gate these are the secrets you don't know god has packaged your life he has structured your life frame you in such a way that you cannot be defeated in life no wonder the bible said john 5 chapter 1 first john chapter first john chapter 4 verse 4 he said little children you are of God he said for great he said and you have overcome the world for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world God who has created you has put his head on the head of you let me use my own word you cannot be defeated in life that is the way you are being structured by God please make use of your youth age judiciously use this very way the strength the agility that God has given to you make sure you use it very well the vitality God has given to you 
Make sure you use it very well so that the devil will not hijack it from you. The Bible says you will not be defeated. Go and read that psalm again. Psalm 127 verse 4. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. The last thing I want to talk about is what is the time of decision making. It is time of what? Of what? Decision making. Don't forget, whatever decision you made today, as a youth, we have an overbearing effect on your life in the future. Either negative or positive. And your present today is a function of the decision you made yesterday. Even your future will be determined by the decision you are making today. God is not a man that is to lie, neither the son of man that is to repent. Whatever God has said, he will work, he will do it, and it will come to pass. And that's why you need to take care of yourself. Joshua said, it is time of decision making. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1. The Bible says, remember your creator in what? In the days of your youth. Remember now your creator in the days of what? Of your youth. The Bible did not say in the day. In the days of your hold or when you are old when you are old or when you are here yet he said in the days of the remember your creator i have packaged your life with everything needed to make it alive i have ordained you to be great in life he said remember your creator if actually you will fulfill your purpose in life if actually your use here will not be a waste if actually you know you will not let me regret for for what for, for for creating you even as a youth. Remember now. When? Hello? When? When? Say, remember now. Your creator. In the days of your youth. Before the difficult day comes. And the year drawn near. When you say, I have no pleasure in them again. I have no pleasure in the day again. Remember now. It is time to remember. It is time of decision making. Joshua said in Joshua 24 verse 15. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord. Choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the God your father served in the region beyond the river. Or the God of Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my how we will serve the Lord. Joshua came to a point in life that he also decided for God. Okay, Joshua had been serving the Lord. He was called the servant of, I mean, of Moses. He was Moses' assistant. He was always with Daddy Moses. Each time Daddy Moses went to the mountain, they were always together. He used his life to serve the Lord. And after the demise of Daddy Moses, as he was leading the nation of Israel, he went to the promised land. He asked the children of Israel. He said, if it appears to you, if it is evil for you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. When you are talking about decision making, you cannot be passive in decision making. I don't know what they are doing in church. I cannot be part of them. You cannot be passive in decision making. Is that you say yes to God and no to the devil. In decision for God, we definitely welcome the devil into your life. If you cannot take a decision for God on time, I will beckon it to the devil to come to your life and destroy you. Because the devil is a destroyer. John chapter 10 verse 7 says, The thief cometh not but to what? To steal, to kill, and to what? And to destroy. But I have come to give you life, even in abundance. You must decide for the Lord. You must decide for the law. You cannot be passive in decision making. You desire yes to God and no to them. In decision for God is equally a welcome to the enemy who is seeking whom to devour. Hello, children. Are you listening to me? When somebody cannot take a decision for God, it equally means or invariably means that what you are welcoming the devil into your life. The devil will not be able to penetrate your life in Jesus' name. He will not be able to penetrate your life in Jesus' name. The devil is trying hard to have you on your side. He's trying hard. He's making a serious effort to have you on your side. They expected decision, right decision at this prime age of life 
Number one is to remember your creator. You are not being created by yourself. It was God who created you. And the Lord said, remember me. He said, for everyone whom I have created, I have done what? I have created them for my glory. Not for defeat. You have been created for glory. You have been packaged for glory. You have been sucked up for glory. You have been blessed with the glory of God. He said, I have created them for my glory. And that's why you need to remember the law. The devil did not have interest in your progress. All he's trying to do is to make sure that what the program of God over your life is being aborted. The program of God over your life will not be aborted in the name of Jesus. Right? To remember your creator in the day of your youth simply mean to take a stand with the overcomer. Hallelujah. To remember God in the day simply mean to take a stand with God. To be in the sight of God. To decide for Jesus to resolve to be with Jesus, the Bible says, and he called even the twelve to himself in Mark chapter 3, verse 13. And he called the twelve to himself that they might be with him and thereafter send them forth to go and preach the it was take a stand with God. I must be with Jesus all the time. Jesus is my daddy. I'm to instruction, I must do its meaning to take a stand with him. In Revelation chapter 30, verse 20, Revelation chapter 30, verse 20 to 22, verse 20 to 22 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come to him and eat with him and he will eat with him. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on the throne. And he will sit down with my father on his throne. He will ask here, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Decide for Jesus today. Be on the side of Jesus. Another right decision is to serve the Lord. Having decided to be on the side of Jesus, several of us we are church goer. Several of us we have given our life to Jesus. But when it comes to active service to the Lord, our record says we are nowhere to be found. God has a record before God said books were open and another books was open in heaven. The book that contained the people that are saved and the book of memorable deeds, what you did when you are now, it is not for the unbeliever. That book is for the believers. God is taking a record of your activities in the church. He's taking a record of your commitment with God. He's taking a record of your devotion to God. There are books in heaven. I think Revelation chapter 20. God is taking record of your servant. You must serve God with all your strength, with all your mind, with all your soul. With everything that God has given to you, you must serve the Lord. Romans chapter 12 verse 11 says, Serve the Lord and not be lacking in sin. You are to serve the Lord now when you are still agile when your agility has not diminished when your agility has not diminished, serve God oh heartily why the evil days have not come evil days are days of weaknesses are days of weariness are days of weaknesses when your strength has been deemed you your fatality has been deemed you when you say you have no strength again in the days that God has given to you we have no strength again even to go about to do what you, you are supposed to do even at your useful age. You are created for service. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. As a random, the last thing is you must be an honorable person. In the book of 2 Timothy 2 verse 20, I will say in a great hour, there are not only, there are not only vessels unto honor, unto this honor. He said, if anyone will be used by the master, if anyone wants to be an honorable vessel, let him purge himself from the latter, from being an ignoble vessel, from being a bad vessel, you must be a honorable vessel in the hand of God. An honorable vessel, somebody who has respect for God, who has regard for God. An honorable vessel has regard for the marriage that God has sanctified. Is an honorable man. An honorable man is somebody who has regard for the work of God. 
I said, no, 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 man. Another man is any man who has the opportunity to see. But if to see, it's another man. It's another, another man. It's, it's any man who is being cancelled to do wrong and does otherwise. If he decided to follow the path of the law, it's another evil vessel. May the Lord bless us in the name of Jesus Christ. God will make you vessel unto honor in the name of Jesus Christ. Vessel of A, vessel of wood will be destroyed on the day of judgment. If it's only a vessel of gold, vessel of sliver, let me use my own word, even vessel of diamond that will not be destroyed on the day of judgment. Which vessel are you? Are you an ignoble vessel or a noble vessel? The Lord is almost interested in the affairs of the youth. Be mindful of the kind of company you keep in life as they determine what becomes of you in the future. Ungodly friendship produces ungodly life. Impartive life is a reflection of right decision made in the days of your youth. Shall we stand up as we pray together? I want to begin to appreciate the Lord as the Lord who has blessed you this morning with the gift of your youth. The Lord has blessed you this morning with the gift of his word. I want to begin to appreciate the Lord. Tell God, if you have not been making use of your age very well, tell the Lord that you are sorry today. You are repenting today. That daddy, uh, from today, I will use my life for you. I will decide for you. I will follow your days of my life. The strength you are given to me, use the strength. The strength you are given unto me as a youth, I will use it to serve you. Pray, pray unto God. Pray that I will pray for your children, that the Lord will help them. God will help you as well to be able to train them. In the path of righteousness and holiness, it will them to build a formidable foundation for them. That the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. That you will not be guilty of His word. You will not be guilty in the name of Jesus. And if you are here this morning, you know you have gotten this wrong at your youthful age. You have passed that search already. And it's like you know that things cannot be reversed again. What you have done when you are at your uh, when you are a youth cannot be undone again. I want to ask God for mercy today. I know with God mercy something can happen in your life. You know you wasted your useful life. Where you are supposed to exercise strength on the right thing to do things that are right, you did not do it. Ask God, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, forgive me. Lord, let me repair my life. Repair my damaged life. My damaged life, let it be repaired, Lord. Lord, let me repair, oh God. Let it be repaired, oh God. Let it be repaired, oh God. Help me, oh God. What you have today is a reflection of the decision you took yesterday. Lord, help me. Help me. Help me to be able to adjust. Help me, Lord. Help me, Father. Thank you, our blessed Redeemer. Hallelujah to Lenny. Even for Jesus' name, we are praying. Our righteous daddy, I want to appreciate you. I want to bless you for the life of your children. I want to thank you for the life of your youth. Lord, let your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Christ. Lord, as many of the youth that have missed it, Lord, in your mercy, restore them once again in the name of Jesus. I pray this stage will not pass them without them taking a concrete decision for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If anybody wants to devour the life of this one, want to destroy their life, oh Lord, I pray that you fight the battle for them in Jesus' name. But some of the here today, they know they got it wrong at their youth to age. And the thing is having an indelible power on their lives. Lord, in your mercy, reach out to them today in Jesus' name. Do the necessary repair in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our blessed Redeemer. Even for Jesus, wonderful day, we are praying. Amen.